How many years have you been in the U.S.? 22 years. 22 years. Yes. Let's say, for example, the money you are making, uh, if you took the money you have made over time, send mm -hmm. it back home, mm -hmm. would you have a better life back home? Uh, it depends. Because the system, the system of U.S. has companies everywhere. People can get jobs. You see? You could be having a hundred million Kenya shillings here. You know, go live in the West Rats area. But it's not the same. It's not the same lifestyle. Because there will be some things you'll be missing. The system is not providing great education. Uh, it's not too many conmans who are going to try to take your money away. There's a lot of things that are involved. So I look at these as disparate systems. U.S. system, Kenya system, they are disparate. But obviously with money, you're going to build a house and do all that. I built a house for my mom not too long ago. Not too long ago? Yeah, just, just the other day. I finished the other day. As in, um, it takes that, that much time to make it enough to build a house? Well, it depends with uh, opportunities. There are some other things I was doing that I could not build a house first. Um, I pay for my sisters, kids, school fees. And actually, to be sincere, one of my sisters who passed away because of uh, HIV, his son, her son, just today, have, uh, be, uh, was blessed with a baby girl called her mom who passed away. So today is a very big day for me because that's my sister who was older than me. And looking at how I helped the kids go through high school, then mature to become people who can own their own businesses and be on themselves, that is a greater accomplishment than building a house. Thank you. Congratulations. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's solid. What's the application of the degrees that you studied for in the U.S.? Uh, you say there are very many companies. Yes. Uh, having, qualifying with uh, the degrees that you have, doesn't that give you an opportunity to get a better job there? It does, but we are not in Kenya. You are black. And these stories you hear about being black, whatever, it's Leo. Why not bleach? It's very <laughs> <laughs> you can bleach, but you see one drop of a black man, one drop, whether you bleach, you swell, your style of walking will be black. <laughs> there's a, there's, there's, there's actually, that, that's actually a thing, like you can walk black. Oh yeah, it's a black style, look at, look at uh, something like basketball, football. Why is America basketball called NBA? Why don't you why is 90% of the people black? A very competitive spot. Because you are built different. Barack Obama, one drop of a jaruo. Yes. All we talk about is Kenya in America. And that is just one, one spam <laughs> of a black man. So um, you, you, you can't get a job because your degree is black. You will get a job. But I don't think you're going to stay there for long if you know yourself. Because they will try to put you down. You've ever gotten a job with oh, your degree? not once. But I've been money. fired right and left. No, good money. Oh, yeah. I yeah. had a thousand dollars. That's La one million shillings. A hundred thousand dollars. Ten million. That's ten I had, million. I had two zeros. Yes, yes, yes. You're the one million. who was in school last. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how comes you're running away from mathematics and you are leading in central? Which year? Huh? In mathematics, which year? Because, you know, I'm thinking a lot. Okay. And you know, you know how the lawyers get you in the court? Uh -huh. They give you one question, they give you like three questions, and they want one answer. Yes. That's how they get you. Sour. Uh, you, 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 you are leading in central, which year? Mathematics? It was, uh, you know, I graduated in 94. In 1994, you 1994. were the top student in Central, in Central Province. Province. Mathematics. Yeah, mathematics. Now I got an award for that. Can't convert 100,000. Then, <laughs> <laughs> what's the highest amount of money, what's the highest amount of money you've made in the U.S. that actually made you proud, as much as you didn't like the job? To be sincere, you know, they hire you, they tell you your salary is $150,000 for a year, right? 
And you know, you go do the job. But personally, my character, I'm not, I know I'm not going to last in that job for a long time. Oh, you don't go with faith? I have faith, but I know before it's too long, You'll someone might fine. end up losing their teeth. Ah. <laughs> okay. Oh, so you go look for a job to get, to get fired? No, I go look for a job, but I know myself. There are some things I'm not going to take. You know, I know myself. I know, I, I know I'm black. You know? And I know I'm Kenyan. And I know that I don't really need that job to survive. To answer your question, the most money I made, I made that money on the streets of the U.S. Because ah. I took river road from here to America. <laughs> <laughs> so... You've said a lot of things that need to be brought to attention. Number one, mm -hmm. we have people who've lost their teeth because of you in the U.S. <laughs> Two of them. Two of them. So there are people who can't say Jesus, just Jethoff, as in just because... <laughs> <laughs> There's someone who can't say sweetheart just because they gave you a job. Um, no, you know, you know America is a no-niggers country. You know, you know, black people, you know, that thing is still there. But oh, you're so not bigger than me, so you know? Yes. And there's too many, the black people are very few. You go to Los Angeles, you go to Kansas City. Actually, to be sincere, when I left in January, I went back to U.S., you know what I did? Even with all those degrees, I went and bought myself a truck. Oh, you bought yourself a truck? Yeah. A big truck. I still have it. It's you, a Kenyan who, who is driving it right now. So you, 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 the, with the money you made from working in campus? No, from the streets. Okay, so? Like, from, from the streets? From the streets, bro. <laughs> no, not like that. Not like that. Not like that. With a pen. With a pen. Kwakalamu. Kwakalamu. It's a legit, you know? But, uh, you see, tracking. Like, a lot of Kenyans, when they go to U.S., people hate tracking. They say, however, they deliver a lot where they are, Chakwenda. But there's a lot of money in that. And you have a lot of freedom where nobody's, you know, coming, leaning it down on you, you know, because you don't want to be pushed aloud. You're Dr. Kengoli. You don't want to be pushed aloud by anybody in this world. But to you come don't want to be pushed aloud. Now, Kikwama, Loriako. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, don't so, touch my track. I don't want to be pushed so around. Because you don't want to be pushed around. Mrs. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. But, uh, you know, US is beautiful. It's beautiful. So you made your, the biggest paycheck you've had is from tracking. Um, no, really. But you make, uh, in tracking, one time I remember I made $5,000 in one week. 500,000 no. shillings. Well, is that 500,000? Yes. It looks like I'm the one living in the U.S. But oh, yeah, it's 500,000. <laughs> My mind was somewhere else. Okay. In one week. You see? But the most money I made at one time is 70,000 U.S. dollars. Wow. Yeah. That's 7 million Kenyan shillings going by the exchange rate, yes, I. Yeah. From nothing to a point where you can make seven million Kenyan Oh yeah, and even much more. Because now you come to understand the system. You have to understand the system. Once you understand the system, you can use it to your advantage. Capitalism, you see Kenyans, problem we have here is that we don't understand capitalism. Make us understand. <laughs> I don't wanna be, do you want the truth? Please. Capitalism is a system of stealing. It's a legalized way of stealing. Where did capitalism come from? It came from someone coming here and taking your lads away. You know? Mm -hmm. We can go back to 1952. Were you born? <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> uh, the story is interesting. I, I want to hear this. Maybe. Yeah. You see... This story of Mau Mau, we don't even understand it. And we don't bother to know what it was and why these guys were dying. I've been homeless in the U.S., sleeping on concrete. These Mau Mau guys, they were the Ahoy, the people who were comfortable. 
They could not go to the forest and fight. These are the people who did not have lads. These are the people who were displaced. They are the ones who fought the Muzungu. Now, Muzungu came and took the lad, which is a fact. It's a fact. A lot of people were left without the lad. Capitalism started there, stealing. We go to America. We have the lead Indians. America was not for white people. It was for people who were called lead Indians. And actually, they are not even Indians. They are Native Americans. You know why they call them Indians? No. Because Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus. Ja, he's a liar. Oh, so you listen to weird music too. <laughs> My leg, man. Okay. Huh? I'm a leggy guy. Christopher Columbus was trying to fight India through another way. He went to the West. He was trying to go to India through the West. Because India, call it the, uh, the, the, the bread basket of Europe. Before he go to India, he fights America. The people he met there, he's calling them Indians. They're Native Americans. But that story of America and Kenya is the same thing. These people today, if you go to America, they were pushed away from their lads. And it was taken away. Beautiful lads. Where Miguna stays over there, Ontario. Miguna, Miguna. You can... Uh, they call it Niagara Falls. If you go see that place, you'll be like, wow, if it was me, I would also have stolen this rod. That's how people were pushed. That's how capitalism came into place. So for you to succeed, you have the mind to steal. Like you have to be a capitalist. Oh yeah, you got to be a capitalist. But it's not stealing. It's a legalized stealing. way of stealing. I can see what's happening in Kenya. I see it. I see what the judges, I see all these song colleagues. So, so, okay, so, so what did you legally steal so that you can actually get to the levels that you did? The system. I understood the system. I stole education. I became smart. You have to be a very good communicator. Okay? You cannot just say the truth. One time I remember I said the truth on, on, on the streets, and a guy really hate me. Punch. A guy from uh, Zimbabwe. Punch me. We was doing some business on the street. And I realized, you know, that's capitalism too. There are a lot of people who never work. Even in America. He punched you, but that was after you have graduated. As in, you didn't need your brain as in that. Oh, no. <laughs> oh by the way, you know what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> after that... That's when I realized these degrees of mine. It's a guy who told me, you know, you, you come to America, you do these sciences, you do these engineering degrees, but you're becoming a slave. He told me the real people do the geography, the history, the fine arts. I felt so bad about myself with those degrees. And, you know, I'm watching American shows and I was asking myself, what do you want to do? I wanted to become a politician. I started reading about Martin Luther King. Started reading about Aristotle. Machiavelli, 48 laws of power. You know, uh, philosophy. Karl Marx. Nietzsche. Frederick Nietzsche. By the way, let me ask the audience. Frederick Nietzsche, what is he famous for? He said, God is dead. Philosopher, God is dead. That's how Germany and Europe decided, you know, oh, God is dead. Okay, we are the God. They're going to come to America, give people blankets that have smallpox. Same case applied here. We can go back to Mau Mau. You know, I see a lot of similarities with this capitalism in America, in Kenya. And since we're on this story of Mau Mau, there's a song that they sing in Nyeri. Say... Dau nyokete giuma kwa wainga, dau nyokete giuma kwa wainga, jesu ake joya, ke hubaguo. So, me, I'm growing up listening to that song. But just recently, I understood that what that song was about. Wainga was a doctor, a traditional doctor. The Muzungu has come to my place in Nyeri, and he has realized that. I can take the lad away. 
from this nigger. I can even take his freedom away. But that is not enough. He is still strong with the way he worships. In Kikuyu. Muzugu realized that if I can change how he worships, I've controlled this man. And up to today, that's what that was taken away. Okay. So for someone who needs to go to America now, how much do you need to survive? In America? Yes. You don't worry about surviving in America. You Who's need to get there. Put your foot. <laughs> As in, I'm, I'm asking for someone who doesn't have the support of pickpockets, someone who starts from scratch. As in, you, just, you just have yourself. You need to go to America and probably start a life. How much backup do you need? Uh, Money-wise, you just need to pay the fare. You just need to pay the ticket and get and, yourself a visa. And get to Chicago. Well, so who do you look for? <laughs> who do you look for Ukishuka, Chicago? Don't worry. Let me tell you something. Anybody you meet in America, they want to help. Hmm. You can even go to America and say, hey, can I have $20? They'll give you 40 You At the end of the day, you're going to find someone giving you money. I went to Hollywood after realizing that these degrees, these science degrees, no. I looked at myself. I realized, oh, I started doing startup comedy. I did it in Dallas, Texas for four years. Go into the clubs. Trying, you know, now, now I have realized, oh, I can make people laugh. Wait a minute. I have something that I can use to relate myself to the baby in diapers and to the grandmother. Like that range, comedy, comedy gets the entire range. But computer science, all I'm doing is programming, sitting in front of the computer. You know, a doctor. I realized comedy is big. I didn't even know what I was getting into. So I go to Hollywood without knowing where I'm going. Same way I left Kenya, went to America without knowing where I'm going. As in you went to Hollywood? No. Hollywood is what we imagine it to be. Like uh, when you go to Hollywood, I believe it's a city, right? Yes. You can show up, uh, who, who are you here for? Say, as in, as in, as in, as in, as in, Okay, but let's watch on Jackie Chan is semenity of and them as in you you know him. <laughs> can, can you do that? Good luck with that. Now the thing is, you see, everybody wanna go to Hollywood, including you. So you have a problem of population. And people who don't have houses who just sleep on the side of the road. A lot of them who are trying to take that opportunity, oh you give money over here, okay. So they come from everywhere. And you know U.S., is cold. most areas are cold. Also, you can actually apply to travel as a beggar because you see as in you can. That's a profession. That's a hundred thousand dollar profession, begging. Yes. Yeah, you can do that. But you know what? You are going to get a lot of, you know, you might get slapped. But you make money. You don't want to be slapped by nobody because of money. So they slap beggars there? Because I want to say the most. No, you're sleeping on country. the side of the law. Nobody's going to give you respect. You know, you are begging. Nobody's going to give you respect that much. They'll give you money, but, you know. You see, in Kenya, you come here and you find people who are saying, just give me a job, anything. No, life does not work like that. You need to know what makes you happy and go for that. Because if you can, you know, we need to change this society to make sure these kids know. Because they are good. They have talent. There is one area that they can use. And they put, if they, they put pressure in that area, like what I did in comedy. At the end of the day, they're going to rise above everyone else. So, so there's one thing I'm trying to get out of you. Moja too. Yes. Someone who dreams, who, who, lives, who wants to live the American dream. Yes. A young Kenyan who wants to travel to the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, they probably can't raise the fair fees sure. or the fair charges. Mm. on getting to America, yes. Uh, where do they start and what are the guarantees? There's a <clears throat> few basics of life. You see, some of these gradual things, you have to do them with the people. This is not just, you're doing it for the society. Somehow, some way, people will still have to come and help you. Okay. Now, work hard 
Today we have internet. Make so many friends, even from America. You might end up finding someone like me, you know, if I like you, that good. I'll pay the $1,000 for you to come. Hustle the visa. If you can hustle the visa, you are done. Air ticket, even here in Kenya, you'll find someone, even if it's not here in Kenya, somewhere, you'll find someone to pay you a fare. One way or another? Yeah, be a nice person. Just be a nice person. Work hard. Believe you know God. You know, don't go screaming people. It's going to happen. Kama, you've uh, had the confidence you could produce people goyo for the American uh, <laughs> for the American economy. Mm -hmm. How comes they didn't deport you? Well, they cannot afford to deport me. I'm too important for them to be to deport me by now. Uh, you know, I present. It's too important that you can actually create your own people with disabilities. <laughs> 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 And they still the have medicine that I give, the lot of medicine that I give, like you do, yes, it heals a lot of people. Ah, uh, so they've tried to arrest you, Kachekesha police, as in I'm assuming that <laughs> Not once. Not once. If you see my videos, I do a lot of Facebook Live. Yes, yes, yes. And, you know, one time I didn't have no fear. I would go and meet police arresting a black person and I'd be like, hey, what has he done? Then they're on the video. Yes. And before you know, because they're also doing some crazy things to the person they're arresting. I'll be like, oh, who is this guy? They just let the guy go. For real? Yeah. And how long does it take to acquire the American accent? Like to be a full nigger? <laughs> how long does it take to be a full nigger? Like you, you, have, you, have, you have blended in properly. Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to do like what Obama went to teach the Americans. You know that half step walk? Yes. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> then don't hang around Kenyans. <laughs> no, for real. Yeah, you're hanging around the same people as you. You are seeing your mirror all the time. You was given a chance to go to United States of America. Mm. Then you're going to go hang around your people? <laughs> So if you want to be a full American, avoid Kenyans. Go hang out with the niggas over there. And whatever they do, if it's this, do it with them. If you go to Rome, do what the Romans do. But not if you come to Kenya. Don't do the Kenyans. <laughs> so uh, your rule of life is avoid Kenyans at all costs. Avoid Kenyans everywhere. No, don't, see, you have fled sometimes. And this fled is like you. It's like you are Mila, you know? Change. Move away from them. But they say Mwachamila ni mtumwa. True. But the other person is not, you know, that is not your mila. You can do your mila by yourself. The thing is, you, you, you hang around one person, one type of group for a very long time. And you're never going to move up. You know? White men, when they came here, they say, these Africans never go beyond the village mentality. That is true. So you consider the American culture more superior than Kenyans? I don't think it's superior. This is what I think. The white men took over the world. Somehow they were fast. They were fast to the system. They even came, you know, they took the lads. The thing is the lad. There's a lot. The all. They took it. So now, whether you jump up Become a pastor. Go to the street, do whatever. Go do PhDs, I don't know how many. You still come back to the lad. If you don't have the lad. Okay. Huh? Minimum wage in the U.S. is uh, higher compared to Kenya. Yes. Uh, and so is the cost of living, I presume? The cost of living, too. Uh, that, that's by asking how much you need to survive, how much do you need to make to live a comfortable life in America? That's what I mean. That's a very good question. You know, <laughs> life is funny. You can be homeless. You can be homeless in America and have a plan to save money. And being homeless is a state of mind. Because like me, I was sleeping. You know, I, I was homeless for one and a half years in Hollywood, following comedy. Like you, Hollywood, the Hollywood we know. The Hollywood you know. 
homeless inamaanisha kulala kwa barabara so you sleep on the road naona Tom Cruise anapita but you you don't you don't have like a house that is true wow that is true that is very true i remember one time i'm in hollywood you know hollywood is so beautiful man the stars walk of fame you know the movies that's where the movies started you see this enter- this this thing really, no entertainment in kenya <laughs> nothing there is six studios in the world that control the netflix the whoever they are in hollywood all of them yes but that place man is brutal it's very brutal la is brutal the black men started with the long foot black people don't have money like that over there but yes you have some money to live on but you know you're not killing it you're not killing all the money but if you want to go to hollywood dr kengori you know get ready to become homeless okay at the end of the day you're going to make it so how much money do you need to survive you actually don't even need money you don't need money you need to be there you need to be there fast because you can make 10 dollars an hour right now by the way people make 15 dollars an hour okay okay but it depends on the kind of house you are living one of you can reduce your life you can reduce your life living in a very cheap place so very if cheap you can way. if you can make 15 dollars uh, an hour for example mm-hmm. that's um, let me do my conversion that's 1500 shillings 10 hours at 15000 per day uh-huh. and uh, you sleep outside and eat at work go <laughs> yes you can do that and you can have your money and sleeping outside you know you don't have to sleep on the street me i used to go to a restaurant and the guys who are working in this restaurant you know had the smoke with them so i become a part and parcel of them so i go there at 11 after coming from school at the corner over there in one of the seats i'll be like for 5 hours and you okay wake up at 5 a.m. go to the gym take a shower Amen. How long did you go to the gym? I've been going to the gym for a minute. I don't look like I go to the gym. No, no, I did not say that. <laughs> but, but but hey, you mentioned smoke, smoke, smoke a lot. You've met Snoop Dogg? No, but um I used to live in the same hood with Snoop Dogg. With Snoop Dogg. Like same hood. Yeah, if I really wanted to see the nigga, I bet you I'll see him. You, but you didn't want to see him. I did not want like to see him. Like you volunteered and said, "Ah, I know Snoop Dogg, but nah." No, nah, I don't want to see him, man, cuz you know, I'm a part and parcel of the system. I want him to come look for me. You want Snoop Dogg to look for you. Not just Snoop. Everybody. Cuz of what I've gone through. I don't want to believe that someone else is superior than me. You see, one problem with artists, oh, I want to go meet so and so. No. Work your way. Let them come look for you. You want Jay-Z to look for the king of Zambia. Of course. Zambia. Come with for his, uh, look for an appointment with you with his wife uh, Beyoncé. Sure. You want to see the king of Zamunda. Very soon it had better happen. Cuz you know what Bob Marley said? Money is just numbers. I got something that they don't have. These are the people you, they don't know Jojo Shukari like that. Jojo Shukari is the one who is coming tomorrow. <laughs>